What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Overwave into Chi, a channel dedicated to exploring power levels in EDH and helping you tune your deck to your meta. I'm your host Jacob, and today we're going to be checking out Kalamax the Storm Sire. And Kalamax is a 4 mana Timur dinosaur elemental creature with whenever you cast your first instant spell each turn, if Kalamax the Storm Sire is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. And whenever you copy an instant spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Kalamax. I'm really excited to show you the battle version of Kalamax because it's going to feature a hidden commander. So be sure to check that out. And as usual, the deck lists are in the description below. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. <music> skirmish version of Kalamax, I decided to go with a whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, do something theme. So we've got Tahili, Castling Flame Breather, Electrostatic Field, Smoldering Egg, Talon the Sky Summoner, so we can create tokens and or deal damage whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell. And then we've also got Bayran as a way to copy those triggers. So Bayran gets even crazier with Kalamax because Bayran will copy the first trigger of copying a spell so you'll get an additional copy of the instant that you cast but you'll also get an additional copy of Kalamax's second ability so whenever you copy a spell you'll get two counters so essentially when you copy an instant spell you'll get two extra copies and four counters on your Kalamax with the Veyran so pretty crazy interaction there so the sorceries are pretty straightforward we got a regrowth for getting stuff back cultivate Kadama's reach to ramp and a blasphemous act in case we need to wipe the board. With the instance, we've got a few ways for us to break through, kind of take out our opponents like brute strength, charge through, invigorating surge, unleash fury. Uh, we got some removal spells going on here, uh, as well as some X spells to kind of help us in the game. And there is one infinite combo in the deck. It doesn't end the game immediately. Um, so what you do is you cast a sorcery and you hold priority and then you cast expansion targeting your sorcery to copy it. And if your Kalamax is tapped, you will copy the expansion. And with the copied expansion, you target the original expansion. And from there, you can have your expansions infinitely copy each other. And this will result in Kalamax becoming infinitely huge. Uh, there isn't any other way for us to really leverage this as far as ending the game goes. With the Archmage Emeritus, you could maybe draw your deck, but even then, uh, good luck ending the game with the whole deck in your hand. <laughs> the artifacts are pretty straightforward. I've got some ramp and a Swiftfoot Boots to protect Kalamax. With the enchantments, we've got a Ranker, one of my favorite aura cards in the game, and it gives plus two, plus O, oh, and trample. And when Ranker goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, you return it to your hand. So you slap it on your Kalamax, you start swinging at people, they remove Kalamax, and then you can get the Ranker back to your hand. And the next time you cast Kalamax, you slap it back on him and start swinging again. Uh, then we've got Sorcerer class. Uh, as we level this up, it lets us tap the creatures that we're generating with our instance and sorcery triggers, uh, allow them to make mana, and then from there, with the third level can be a win condition by dealing damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant sorcery spells you've cast that turn whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, which will also get copied with Veyran. So some pretty fun synergy there. The lands are also pretty straightforward. Uh, Blighted Woodland is a really nice way to ramp in the lands. They've got some guild gates, some more into the battlefield tap lands, um, and some, some basics. Uh, our colors aren't too stretched, um, but we are playing three color, so having some lands that can produce extra colors, even if they do enter tapped, is perfectly fine. The battle version of Kalamax is super spicy because we've got our hidden commander, and that is going to be Risen Reef. So when Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it into the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card into the battlefield, put it into your hand. And so I, the, the inspiration was I wanted to build a deck that abused Risen Reef. And one of the fun interactions we get is with Young Pyromancer, because whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you create a 1-1 red elemental token. So the elemental that you make will trigger Risen Reef and uh, 
start generating card advantage and getting you more lands. Uh, we've also got Omnath, so whenever a land enters, you make an elemental. So once you get Omnath plus Risen Reef, they'll basically just feed off of each other. Uh, you get a land, which will make an elemental, which will trigger Risen Reef, which will potentially put another land into play. So with these two cards on the battlefield, things get really crazy. Uh, we've also got Niv Mazette as a fun win condition and uh, Dual Caster Mage for a few combos that we'll get into uh, a little bit later. In the Sorceries, we've got Regrowth again to help us get stuff back. We've got our Rampant Growth. Uh, Ramp on 2 is really good. As stated in my Prosper deck, we have a 4-mana Commander. So following the play pattern of Ramp on 2, ra uh, Commander on turn 3, really great. Uh, right of Replication is here to copy our Risen Reef. Uh, so if we kick this on a Risen Reef, get a bunch of Risen Reefs and uh, just start ripping through your library. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Then we've got the Omnath, which we can also kick with Rider Replication. So you'll get five copies of the Omnath, and due to state-based actions, you'll have to put five of those Omnath into the graveyard, and all of the Omnath will see each other die. So you're going to have six Omnath, five of them are going to be going to the graveyard, and that's going to be uh, 15 damage for each Omnath. So 6 times 15 puts you at 90 damage. So you can kill two other players at the table, assuming no one's taken any damage yet. Maybe all three if enough players are low enough. Um, then we've got Blasphemous Axe to wipe the board. And an Eldritch Evolution. Um, Eldritch Evolution can turn our Kalamax into a Numazet if we really want to. Um, or it can turn one of our one mana dorks into a Risen Reef. So since we really want to get the Risen Reef out, uh, some extra tutors are going to help us do that. We've streamlined the instants in terms of removal and the CMC that they are, um, as well as added a few extra counter spells. Um, then we've added some copy spells like Faded Infatuation, Replicate, and Cackling Counterpart so we can copy our Risen Reef and get more triggers, um, do some really crazy shenanigans, and because they're instants, Calamax will copy them and we'll get two copies of the Risen Reef and just start going ham from there. Um, we've also got Ghostly Flicker to combo with the Dual Caster Mage. So with the Dual Caster Mage, you can make it uh, continue to flicker another creature or a land. So you can flicker your Omnath to deal infinite damage to the table, or you can create infinite elementals by flickering a land and the Dual Caster uh, to make infinite 5-5s. Five then we've got another combo, which is the expansion from the previous Skirmish deck. Um, but we have a way to actually win the game with Rawl Storm Conduit. So whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, uh, he'll do a one damage to an opponent or a planeswalker. You can still make the Kalamax big if you really want to, um, but we do have the Rawl to just end the game with that one. Nothing crazy in the artifacts, just some ramp to help us get Kalamax out. The enchantments, so we've got Sorcerer Class again and Cryptothrite to generate more mana off the creatures that we make. Uh, Goblin Bombardment and Impact Trimmers to help us close out the game. And a Wilderness Reclamation. Uh, since we have a bunch of instants in our deck, it's nice that we can tap out on our turn and then have the mana open on our opponent's turn to interact with them. And then the last card is an Arcane Adaptation. And this card basically choose a creature type and all creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. So uh, we're gonna name elementals and from there everything that enters the battlefield will trigger Risen Reef. So uh, Mermaid Mystic, Tower and Tokens, or Dorks, uh, it's all gonna be value from there. Change the lands around just a little bit, uh, taking out some of the lands that enter untapped or some lands that will enter untapped um, as well as uh, added a field of the dead. Uh, so whenever we play a land, if we have seven or more lands with different names, we'll make a 2-2 black zombie. But if we have the arcane adaption out, it will be an elemental. So our lands will uh, create elementals, which will then uh, hopefully compound on itself. Uh, and then in the sideboard, I have a xenograph. So if you really want to lean into the arcane adaptation uh, interaction, you can add that in too if you really want to. Before we move on to the glory version of Calamax, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what commander you'd like to see me brew next. For the glory version of Calamax, decided to use Kiki Jiki as our primary win con, and that's because Core of Calling is really strong with Calamax since if you convoke 
Calamax or tap Calamax for the Convoke of Court of Calling, you will be considered tapped when you cast the Court of Calling, and he will then copy it. And from there, you can get both Kiki and your Pestermite or the Deceiver um, with one card. So a really strong one card win condition uh, with the uh, Calamax. Then we've got a few one, two mana ramp spells. Bloom Tender, very strong since we'll be able to generate three mana. Uh, with the Bloom Tender, um, we got the Archmage back in here. Um, generate some extra card advantage off the spells that we're casting. Uh, Dark Side, just a really powerful card in the format. And again, we've got the Nimbus Uh This card will generally run a table. Uh, tons of instants and sorceries being cast in the CDH meta. And this card is also uncounterable, so it's very hard to deal with. Still going light on the sorceries in this deck. We've got the Eldritch Revolution again to get us into the Nimazet, or can cheat out a Kiki or one of the Deceivers if we need to. Uh, three visits and Nature's Lore, two mana ramp, fantastic. It also lets the land enter untapped and a solve the equation to uh, let us to for whatever instant or sorcery we need at the moment. And the instance, you'll see that we're going to continue to improve on our instant interaction package. Uh, just a lot of cheap instant speed removal, a lot of counter magic. Um, especially in CDH, Calamax gets a nice boost um, since a lot of counter magic will be present. Being able to copy your counter spells and, or all your spells makes it just really hard for our opponents to, to deal with them. Um, then you've got Cinderclasm, fantastic for removing. You can either deal one damage to each creature or you can kick it and deal two damage to each creature. And with Calamax, you get to copy it. So um, you'll copy the spell and put a counter on Calamax, so he'll be at five, and the Cinderclasm will not kill him. So a really great way to clear the board of creatures and keep Calamax at the same time. Uh, then we've got Brain Freeze for a combo and with uh, Honorable Breach and Lion's Eye Diamond or Lotus Petal. If you're unfamiliar with this combo, what you do is, with an Honorable Breach in play, you Brain Freeze yourself, and with the cards that you mill, you recast your Lion's Eye Diamond, and you crack your Lion's Eye Diamond, and you continue to brain freeze yourself over and over and over again. And eventually you get so much storm that you can just start targeting your opponents with the copies of Brain Freeze and mill them out eventually. For the artifacts, I basically just added in the staples like Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt, uh, Jewel Lotus, even though uh, Calamax is only going to be able to use two of the mana that we make with the Jeweled Lotus. If Calamax gets removed and we want to cast it again, uh, basically just makes it cost three mana. So, not bad. Then the Lion's Eye Diamond and the Lotus Petal for the uh, Brain Freeze combo, as mentioned before. Uh, enchantments, also pretty straightforward. Carbon Flowers, fantastic for generating mana. Mystic Study, uh, Mystic Remora, and Sylvan Library to generate card advantage and a wild growth as a pretty straightforward uh, ramp spell. So with the lands, we've pretty much got all of our lands entering untapped at this point. Uh, we've got some utility like Cephalid Coliseum so we can hit an opponent's Thassa's Oracle uh, before the ETB trigger resolves. So if you have Threshold, you can sacrifice the Cephalid Coliseum to force a player to draw three cards. So if a player casts their Tainted Pact, exiles their deck, and then Thoracle on the stack, uh, force them to draw a card, and then they'll lose the game. So really nice uh, backup plan in case we can't deal with it. Thank you for watching this episode of Opal Wave MTG. Uh, if you like this and you want to check out some other content, you can check it out here. Uh, again, my name's Jacob, and until next time.